Bienvenidos, Ushamdi, and welcome CTS 131, Section 875 students for the Spring 2018 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the Cisco Networking Academy Routing and Switching Essentials Version 6 course. And this afternoon's Packet Tracer Tutorial and Solution Set is going to be on Packet Tracer Activity 5.2. 1.4. It's a very straightforward, simple activity where we're going to talk about configuring SSH or the secure shell functionality that we can implement on Cisco devices. Now remember, SSH should be used instead of Telnet and the reason is because SSH communications are encrypted, whereas Telnet the traffic is actually pa passed back and forth in plain text. In fact, somewhere on my YouTube channel, I have a video where I've demonstrated with Wireshark what happens if you have a packet capturing tool like Wireshark. You can actually see the Telnet password as it has been entered in plain text. So let's go ahead and dive in here on the activity. Again, we have a switch. We can assume it's been taken out of the box turned on, we've had some minimal configuration done, VLAN 1, we've configured a switched virtual interface or an SVI, typically used for management on layer 2 switches and sometimes can be used as a default gateway when we get into a multiple VLAN scenario on a multi-layer switch. All right, so we've got VLAN 1 configured, the SVI is 10.10.10.2 is the IP address, the IP address on the NIC is the all tens, 10, 10, 10, 10. So what are we gonna be doing for this activity? Well, we're gonna secure the password. So let's go ahead and see here. I'm wondering if they're gonna allow me ac access here. Okay, so this is typically the first uh, hurdle that learners will run into. They'll click on the switch and they'll say, oh, okay, well, I'm just gonna come to the CLI like I always do. However, the CLI tab is locked. So we're gonna have to use the command prompt on PC1 to get over to switch one. So let me go ahead and pull PC1 up here. We'll go to the desktop and, whoops, not the terminal, but the command prompt. So from here, we're gonna say SSH, and there should be a user, I'm assuming here, and maybe not. So let's see what we've got going on here. 10.10.10.2. And I thought for sure we would need to put in here Oh, I'm sorry, not SSH, Telnet. I misread that. Sorry about that. I was thinking it was after telling you to use SSH. So we're going to Telnet over to 10.10.10.2. And we're simply going to get the password. And the password should be Cisco. So here we are in user exec mode. You can tell because we're at the greater than sign. It wants us to save the current configuration so that any mistakes that you might make can be reversed by toggling the power for the switch. Okay, so let's get into privilege exec mode by issuing in the enable command, and the password is also Cisco. So we're gonna say write mem to save the configuration, or that's write memory. I could also say copy, running config, startup config. I simply like write memory, it's just a little bit easier to use. All right, we haven't received any points yet. So show the current configuration and note that the passwords are in plain text. So when I say show run, you can see right here, the enable password is in plain text because we said at some point on this switch, we said enable password Cisco instead of enable secret. But here's what we're gonna be doing. So now let's go ahead and show the current configuration of the passwords. Enter the command that encrypts the plain text password. So we're going to get into global config with the configure terminal command. And I'm going to say service, because this is a service being executed by the switch, service password encryption. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And that is now going to encrypt, if I say do show run, you can see it's going to encrypt all passwords. However, it's using the type 7 password. And for the enable command, this is not ideal because this right here can be cut and pasted into any of about a million different websites that within a split second can decrypt what you have right there. Because again, this is a very, very weak cipher uh, that's being used and can be reversed very easily. Uh, again, type 7 password, Cisco's been very upfront that these passwords are not meant to keep out the wiliest of hackers, that these passwords are there for one reason and one reason only. Uh, the hashes, I should say, the type 7 passwords, are there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to deter the shoulder surfer, right? The individual from looking over your shoulder 
and basically seeing that the password, oh, it's just Cisco. Okay, so we've gone ahead and done that. We've verified passwords are encrypted. Now we're going to go to step two, where we're going to encrypt communications. And here's where uh, we're going to be using SSH. Now, it says it's generally not safe to use Telnet. That's definitely clear. So we're going to configure the domain name. Now, you'll sometimes hear people say, you have to c configure the domain name to configure SSH. That is not a true statement. You can actually label the SSH keys and, uh, and, and avoid putting the domain name in. However, here we're just simply going to say IP domain name, and it's going to be netacad.pka, netacad.pka. Now, it says secure keys are needed to encrypt the data. Generate the RSA keys using a 1,024-bit key length. So all I need to do here is crypto key generate, right? I'm going to be generating uh, crypto keys, and, the, and actually it's going to be RSA. And this is something that's specific to Packet Tracer. On a regular Cisco switch, you could say crypto key generate RSA modulus and then put the 1,024 in. However, Packet Tracer likes us to go ahead and type in crypto key generate RSA, then hit enter and type in the bit length for the keys. So we've got that done. We did score some points. Uh, and that looks like it may be all they're going to have us do. Now, a quick note, if they don't have us do this, best practice, always change the version to version 2. And you would do that by saying SSH, uh, or I'm sorry, IPSSH. I always forget the IP. IPSSH version 2. Now, they're not asking for that, and I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to confuse the scoring engine. So I'm just reading here real quickly. Okay, so we're going to configure an S or create an SSH user and reconfigure the VTY line. So we're going to create a user. We're going to say username. The username is going to be administrator with a secret of Cisco. And let's see, we should get some points for that. We do. Now, configure the VTY lines to check the local username database for login credentials and to only allow SSH for remote access. Remove the existing VTY line password. And so Lauren had this question, how would you go about doing this? Well, let's come down and take a look at the VTY lines. You can see we've got lines 0 through 15 configured. There's the existing password. So if I was to say line VTY 0 to 15, I would say no password. And now when we say do show run, hopefully it's gone. It's not going to make me type in the, uh, yeah. And so now you can see the password is gone. We ended up getting about six points for that. Now, configure the VTY lines to check the local username database. Well, for that, I would say login local. We already did the no password. That's been removed. And now I need to set the switch up so that it only accepts incoming SSH connections. And that was seven points right there, and that brought us to the 100. And so let's take a look and see what it ultimately looks like here at the end. Is I've got my VTY lines, login local, because I'm forcing it to use the local database. Remember, before it only said login. And with only login there, it's only going to be looking for the password that was configured with the setting only login. However, we've removed the password and we've said login local because now we want it to look at the local user database, the same database where we created the username administrator secret Cisco. All right, now final thing to do here, we're gonna save our configuration with the right mem. I'm gonna exit off the Telnet session here and now we're gonna say SSH minus L administrator and we're gonna go to 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 you can see that we now get prompted for the password. We set the password to be Cisco, and there you have it. And so that is how you would set up a switch for remote management, remote management being from a Telnet or an SSH connection, as opposed to connecting a console cable in. That would be considered sort of your local management. So this is remote management of the switch, and we've just configured SSH. Now, before we go, a couple things that you're going to want to do in reality here. Let's get back into Privilege Exec and into Global Config. You're going to say, right after you configure the SSH keys, IPSSH version 2. 
and let's see what else they've got available to us. Yeah, you would want to set the authentication retries, right? So that if someone's trying to brute force attack you, you could set it to three. So you get three attempts. And then you could say IPSSH, whoops, set your timeout interval. Uh, and we can set it to 45 seconds of inactivity. You're going to get logged out. And then uh, we've got retries, timeout, and the version. And so then we're good. Right, so that's it. There are a few other settings that you would set that are a little more advanced that come up in the CCNA security curriculum, but at a minimum, you would want to make sure that after you set up SSH, the keys with the crypto key generate, you change the version to two, you set a timeout, and then you also set a max attempts. And let's see where that ended up in the config here. I don't see that. And, it, and the reason I don't see it is because it very well could be that that is IPSSH. Uh, what was it? Uh, authentication retry. Sorry. And we'll set it to seven because that is definitely. All right. We'll set it to five then. We'll set it something other than what I believe to be. Yeah. The default happened to be three, which is why we didn't see it. Remember, with Cisco, 99.9% .9 of the time, if it's a default setting and you go to set it and you enter the command in, it is not showing up in the running config. All right. Well, that is going to wrap up Packet Tracer Activity 5.2.1.4 where we took a look at configuring SSH, and we discussed why you should be using SSH for remote access as opposed to Telnet. Remember, Telnet is sending everything in plain text. Very easy to get a lot of information when people are using Telnet. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great night.